Uh, I think our allies, as well as our adversaries, need to hear from her that she is going to deviate when it comes to issues like Israel. She's going to deviate when it comes to issues like how she handles major challenges, uh, the Afghan withdrawal, obviously, you know, just having marked the third anniversary. Mm -hmm. She can project a different policy from Biden. And I think one thing that's important for observers is we need to see a different team in place. This cannot be the same figures that governed uh, foreign policy over the last three and a half years. Well, because you raised the Afghanistan withdrawal, obviously Donald Trump has been making uh, a big deal out of that this week as we mark three years since that happened. He was uh, in Virginia on, on Monday paying tribute to the 13 service members who died in the sur uh, suicide bombing there. How should we be considering the role of the vice president in that? Because he has put a lot of blame on Kamala Harris for the chaotic nature of that withdrawal. To what extent is it deserved? I've sat in the situation room with then Vice President Biden, and quite frankly, the vice president don't, doesn't hold a whole lot of sway over these major foreign policy decisions. Yes, they have a voice, but they are one voice of many, the defense secretary, the secretary of state, the director of the CIA, all of those, quite frankly, hold greater weight than uh, the vice president. And Vice President Harris has not played a major role on foreign policy. Now, obviously, that's also going to be a criticism that Trump and his allies are going to level. What are the qualifications? Well, that's true. And yet she's had the benefit of three and a half years of working on these issues. And, you know, that is some of the best training that you can get in the Situation Room. I think, quite frankly, her service during the last three and a half years, her interaction with international leaders is far better preparation than J.D. Vance will have gotten, you know, in his short tenure in the Senate. Fair enough. He was just elected uh, two years ago. Uh, on the subject of Harris's experience, this is actually we heard Jake Sullivan addressing this in his trip to China this week. The National Security Advisor, of course, talked about how Harris is prepared, that she's interfaced with Chinese leaders before, but also seemed to signal that she will bring continuity when it comes to China policy from what the Biden administration policies have been. Will there be daylight between the two of them on this issue? I don't think so, because quite frankly, it has been a successful policy. And it also is uh, the continuity from a Trump uh, policy, which has been uh, pretty hard when it comes to uh, sanctions, tariffs, and just an overall um, more aggressive stance towards Beijing that tries to get the message across to Xi Jinping, to others in China, that the U.S. is done with being pushed around. We had that for too many years on an economic front, on a political front. We're seeing the consequences of it in the South China Sea with mm -hmm. these uh, literal uh, crashes between Chinese Coast Guard vessels and the Philippines uh, Navy or even just maritime uh, vessels. It has got to stop. And I think what we're seeing in signals from Beijing is that they are ready to turn the page on this uh, because obviously the pressure has started to mount domestically on Xi Jinping. Do you think Beijing would prefer the outcome of a Harris presidency or a second Trump one? You know, it's interesting. Uh, Beijing likes uh, predictability. They like uh, stability. I think that Harris will be tough, but she will be predictable. So that is not to say that she's going to go any easier. The challenge with Trump, and, and this is important, I think, to bear in mind. I was just uh, in London last week talking with um, your colleague, Critty, and one of the, the questions that came up is, isn't you know Trump better for business? The problem with Trump in business is you don't know what he's going to do from one minute to the next, from one X post or uh, truth social post to the next. And I think especially on the foreign policy front, foreign leaders uh, came to understand that at least there were some guardrails. There were, you know, uh, the likes of Chairman uh, Miley. There were the likes of um, the you know former uh, Secretary of um, of defense um, uh, under Trump, uh, Mark Esper. Yeah. All of these were figures who they could um, guarantee were going to be an emergency break uh, on Trump's you know, more ill-considered tendencies. They're not going back into a Trump administration by all accounts. And so we find ourselves in much riskier territory, and a lot of foreign leaders right now are trying to figure out who would be a secretary of state, who would be a secretary of defense, and the options up there aren't great ones. Do you have an idea of who the options might be for Kamala Harris? Well, you know, it's interesting. I think uh, Harris would and should lean more on experienced diplomats. 
we ought to see folks who have spent time uh, in multiple foreign tours because, you know, at the moment with wars in Ukraine, wars uh, across Gaza and, and risks around the world, this is not the time for amateur ambassadors. This is not the time for somebody who donated a lot to a political campaign becoming the ambassador to uh, London or Berlin. We need folks who have the requisite experience who understand the sophisticated kind of strategies that have to be deployed right now. That's not what we saw all the time from Biden. We saw, unfortunately, a reversion to a lot of those old political party favors that were being handed out. And quite frankly, friends who uh, still are at the State Department, who yeah. still serve on the National Security Council, have said there were too many of these political appointees. And I think it was an effort, if you will, at trying to mark a departure from the Trump administration. Harris needs to go back to some of that institutional knowledge and experience within our national security structure. We've got a minute left. Would you join a Harris administration? I would not. I have served my time over 12 years. I'm not looking for another uh, stint in government.